Hello and bonjour everyone. It is April 2021 and at the start of the month, two things happened. Number one, we hit 200,000 subscribers on the channel. And number two, France chose that exact moment to go back into lockdown. So you've hit a subscriber milestone. I can't travel anywhere for the next few weeks. I think we all know what this means. It's time for a Q&A. So I put up a community post asking for you to send in your questions. Loads of you did, and today I'm going to try and answer where are you going? What do you do? Why are you in Paris? What's that music? Who's this? Where's that? Let's roll the intro. Oh, hang on. Uh, stop the intro because we've got a question about it. Samite fan asks, where are the places in your intro? Okay, we'll start with this year's intro because all of these places are ones that I visited on the channel and you can find them in my old videos. That was the legendary Flavorland mountain expedition in Urk, Netherlands. This is a ditch somewhere in Woolwich in London. That was the Völklingen abandoned ironworks in Germany. And this was the Lartig monorail in Listhol, Ireland. But if you're talking about the old intro, and a few of you definitely were, then that's another story because I originally made it for the first ever Tim Traveller video. And of course, back then, I didn't have any clips from the channel that I could use. So I raided my old holiday photos to find random bits of throwaway video that I'd made over the years, just messing around, and I used those. So poetry in motion. Problem is, I kept getting questions about it in the comments, mostly from distressed Finnish or Israeli people saying, I can see you visited my country, but I can't find the video. Where is it? And well, unfortunately, there is no video. All of those clips are from before I started YouTube. And what's worse, it's not even Israel. But anyway, the five places are Swarmenlinda Fortress Island in Helsinki, Finland, Neist Point on the Isle of Skye in Scotland, the Dead Sea in Jordan, but with Israel in the background, Zabriskie Point in Death Valley, USA, and finally, the spectacular Meteora in Greece. Right, on to the rest of the questions now, and Smith 3 asks, are there any countries you want to visit or had plans to visit before the pandemic? Yes, so many. I mean, last year I was planning to do videos in the Nordic countries, in Eastern Europe, in North Africa, and maybe even further afield if the ad revenue was really coming in. But well, you know what happened. And instead, you got a whole year of videos about France. Anyway, I keep a list on my computer called Tim Traveller Video Ideas, because of course I do, and I've got a hundred ideas on there in about 40 different countries. I cannot wait to start bringing those to you, but we just have to sit it out for the moment. Hopefully it will be possible soon. BWI Aviation asks, so what exactly is it that you do for a living? This one keeps coming up and it seems to confuse a lot of you because I guess it is unbelievable that you could make a living from videos like mine, but here's the full story. I used to have a sensible office job in London and I did that for 10 years until eventually I wanted a break and I quit to go traveling for a bit. And this was end of 2017, beginning of 2018. Since I was traveling and I had a bit of spare time, I thought, well, why don't I make some travel videos? Best case scenario, they help to fund more travels and worst case, no one watches them, but I've made some nice memories for when I go back to the sensible office job. Thanks to you lot, I haven't gone back to the office job yet. I do have some other gigs outside YouTube. I do live work as a musician, but since the pandemic hit, all of that stopped and this is my only job at the moment. So genuinely, thank you all for keeping me employed. On a related note, nearly everyone asks, do you perform the piano music in your videos? Yes, I do. And to answer the other two little questions that were in there, I play guitar as well, not to the same standard, but you'll hear it in some of my videos, including one where my B string was completely out of tune. And I cannot tell you what all the pieces are, I'm sorry, it would take far too long, but there was a question about the intro and outro music, and I will answer that at the end of this video. Eknivo asks, I was wondering how your real life job brought you to live in France, and how did your foreign languages get so good? So there is no real life job. I moved here really because of this job. And part of the reason why YouTube appealed to me in the first place is because you have the freedom to work from anywhere. And you've seen my videos, I really do. And although I loved London, I always kind of missed the adventure of living abroad. Wait, Tim, you lived abroad before. Is that how you learned French? Is this about to be covered in the next question? Jack Elvey asks, did you go to university? If so, which one and what did you study? Yes, I did. This one. It's not very well known, but the University of London has a tiny little institute in Paris called, wait for it, the University of London Institute in Paris. You can come here as a British or international student and get a degree in French. And when I was younger, that's exactly what I did. 
I don't know if it's still the same now, but when I went, I think there were 30 people in my entire year. And because it was so small, there was no campus, no student accommodation, no student bar in the evenings, nothing was really laid on for you. So it was a proper adventure. You'd have to go out and find your own flat, and then your own places to socialise, and after one week of that, your student loan had run out, so you'd have to find some work as well. All of that at 18 years old and in French. It was a great experience, but it was quite tough. You had to grow up quite quickly, and to be honest, the romantic idea of studying in Paris begins to lose its shine when you realise it's a real city, you're living in a shoebox, and you're scraping enough change together to buy a packet of pasta from Liderpreis. But, you know, we were happy in those days, although we were poor. Sorry, where was I? Jago Hazard asks, Have you ever been really surprised by the way a video has been received? I've been surprised by the way the whole channel has been received, but the biggest surprise was the video about Paris's fake facades. People just keep clicking on that, it's up to 5 million views now. I guess for whatever reason it appeals to a wider audience, I'm not complaining about it. And on the other end of the scale, there's the follow-up, 5 more fake facades in Paris, which I admit isn't my best video ever, it's what we'll call lockdown content, I was just making what I could in the circumstances. But I did hope that YouTube might go and recommend it to all the people who'd watched the first one. It didn't. Caesar Oct asks, As an English speaker who learned French, what is the hardest French word to pronounce? Are there any words that give you away as not a native speaker? Thank you so much for asking this. There are a lot of things that give me away as not a native speaker, but if I have to think of one word, it would probably be this. And instead of demonstrating how bad I am at saying it, I'm going to pass you over to my French cousin so you can all learn it. Hello! Today we will learn how to say the word frog in French. And it is this. Grenouille. 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 We have deliberately made this word impossible for the English speaker to say. And there is a very good reason for that. You may insult us in your stupid English, but you will never insult us in French. Kate Cole asks, are you going to do a collab with Jeff when Corona goes away? I would love to, and I know a lot of you want to see this because there were a lot of questions about it, but you know, as always with collabs, it's difficult for me to say, yes, that's definitely going to happen, unless you're Jeff himself asking that question. Jeff Marshall asks, My question would be, when are you coming back to Britain and we can do a lease you station together? Come join me on my channel. Well, I guess that clears that one up. I've spoken to Jeff and we've penciled in a trip to a leased use station. Obviously, it all depends on things opening up again and travel being possible, but I'm absolutely honoured to be invited and hopefully we can make it happen sometime soon. Mate Commender asks, How did you end up in Unfinished London? How did you end up in Unfinished London? How did you end up in Unfinished London? Sorry! For any of you who don't know, Unfinished London is a brilliant YouTube series by Jay Foreman that I have sneakily appeared in twice. And even if you've never seen it, I think it's worth telling the story. It all starts before this channel even existed, back when I was Tim, I was just some bloke who's a fan of Jay's videos. Still am, really. Jay, as he sometimes does, put out a tweet asking for extras for a scene. And it was the other side of London, it was a bit of a pain to get to, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do it. So I went along, and little did I know, I ended up in a scene with Jeff, and in one evening I'd met two of my favourite YouTube people. Of course, they don't remember it, I was just some bloke, but that kind of pushed me over the edge to make my first Tim Traveller video. No views, no subscribers back then, but Jeff very kindly retweeted it, 20 or 30 people subscribed, and a Greek man called Steramel made what I think is the first ever comment. A year or so later, YouTube suddenly spammed my videos to half the Western world, Jay discovered the channel, invited me to appear in another episode, and the rest, as they say, is very silly. He didn't like it for two reasons. I don't like it for two reasons. And finally, Breadface asks, what are the two music tracks that are in nearly all of your videos at the end and the start? Well, the intro track doesn't have a name, it's just an instrumental backing track that I originally made for a hiking video, and then it ended up kind of like everything else in my intro, I just needed something to go in there, and that piece of music was lying around, so in it went. And then the music at the end is a piano cover I made of a track called The Carnival by Gordon Giltrap, which is better known in the UK as the theme to holiday TV show Wish You Were Here. 
If you've never seen it, it was a peak time evening show that ran from the 70s to the early 2000s and basically every week they'd have four presenters and each one would go on holiday to a different place. They were forever going to the Seychelles, Saint-Tropez or some beautiful beach resort in the Bahamas. They'd file a five minute report about it and that was their job. It was the best program to be a presenter on. There's a woman called Judith Chalmers who got the job and held on to it for 30 years. But at the end of each report, they would always tell you how to do it yourself. They'd say which hotel they'd stayed in, who they flew with, how much it cost. So when I did my first Tim Traveller video, I thought it would be funny to do the same thing about the kind of places that I go to. So I made a version of the music partly as a gag, partly as a parody, and partly as a tribute. If you want to go and buy the original track, it's called The Carnival and it's on Amazon Music and all the other places. I'll link it in the description below. And that seems like a good place to end today's Q&A. Thanks to everyone who sent questions in. If I didn't answer your one directly today, then hopefully one of the other answers sort of covered it. But if not, don't panic. I will go back on the community post this week and answer you individually there. In the meantime, I need to set up an account with Amazon Affiliates, but I will try to get some sort of travel video out in the next few weeks. It'll have to be something in Paris or maybe using some old footage or just something a bit different. Who knows? Either way, thank you for watching and I will see you soon.